This bad girl right here is the SYS 751GE TNRT, an $80,000 AI supercomputer designed to go in your house. No, seriously, people are asking for this. And trust me, I have the same reaction. But hear me out, the world is changing. For perspective, every workstation that Supermicro now sells is actually purpose-built to support AI and machine learning. And bundle that with a global shift to working from home, and you end up with demand for top-tier AI hardware like this, the type of stuff that draws thousands of watts of power that's somehow quiet enough to be under your desk at home. Like, seriously. Where's the power button? Oh, I missed it. It's on. That's how loud it is. And this is how a radiator quite literally almost the size of an Xbox Series X. Holy shit. But look at this radiator. And I can't wait to show you the rest of the water cooling. But for now, let's make this back into a complete system. Of course, since this system is meant to go, you know, at someone's house or in a lab under the desk, the form factor is a tower. Now, it is still rack mountable. You can pull off the top here and the feet at the bottom and rack mount it, but the intended purpose is a tower. So up front, you're gonna see things that are like a workstation. We got headphone jack, microphone jack, kind of standard things. I don't know if you would, you know, have Windows on this and do your Microsoft team calls on, a, on an AI supercomputer like this, but you could if you wanted to. There's also two USB ports and one of the stars of the show, the eight Gen 5 NVMe slots. All of them are full speed. You can see our boot drive right here, what is this? Nothing exciting, it's just a two terabyte boot drive. But you could put up to, theoretically, if you put 30 terabyte drives, 240 terabytes of storage in this system. And that's before we even get to any of the other cool hardware. Now, of course, the best thing up front is the power button, because you turn this thing on and it's like, it barely makes noise. This computer has two 2,000 watt power supplies in it. That's the type of heat we're dealing with, and it barely makes noise. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, you know, it's not doing anything yet, but they had it when we walked in here loaded with, I think, a 1,500 watt load or so. Still, the exact same noise level. Oh, there's peels in here they haven't even peeled. Oh. Remove film before use. <laughs> Nobody read that. It never gets old peeling plastic off $10,000 graphics cards, let alone four of them. Now, we'll, t we'll talk about those later. I think the star of the show here is actually the CPUs. Now, this isn't an AMD-based system. This is Intel. Um, despite AMD having really, really awesome server stuff, it's still only about 30% of the market share. So 70% of the systems they're selling are still Intel-based. This is Sapphire Rapids. It's actually just come out after God, it's been like two years of delay. So this system, fully spec'd out, could be up to 256 core processors or 350 watts per socket. It's a serious amount of power. For memory, there's eight sticks per socket. And while Sapphire Rapids can do up to 16 or two DIMMs per channel, it's, it's kind of hard to fit it in a configuration like this. What you'll see in a lot of dual socket servers is the CPUs kind of in the front or they'll be in a configuration where they're staggered slightly. Now this is important primarily for airflow. Now, if you were to have both of the sockets like this in an air-cooled system, the second CPU here is just gonna be getting a straight hot air, which you don't really want. Since this is water-cooled, it doesn't matter. Now, it's also weird. I've never seen a system like this where the sockets are in between the graphics cards, um, especially in this configuration. Now, there is an important reason for this. Because the system is PCIe Gen 5, the actual lane length, the physical traces on the motherboard, the length of those is very important. The longer you go, the harder it is to run that sort of frequency. As, as PCIe generations get faster and faster, it's just gonna keep getting harder and harder. A lot of boards from other manufacturers will use something called a retimer, which is basically just like a, a, a signal booster, um, but Supermicro doesn't use that. And because they position the sockets like this, they can make those physical traces on the board from the PCIe slot to the CPU super short, which makes it a lot easier to run speeds like that, and you don't have to use retimers. Now, since the CPUs and the GPUs are water-cooled, Naturally, the next thing you're wondering is what else are they gonna water cool? And apparently on the next version of the system, they're gonna water cool the dims. I mean, it's not doing anything right now, but they don't feel particularly hot. And there is a good amount of airflow, but um, I guess the more dense the dims get, you can use up to 256 gig dims, which in the full configuration is two terabytes per socket. Um, it's probably a bit more heat than this. Do you think they'd get mad if I took one of the graphics cards out? Yes. They like us. I think I'm just gonna do it. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> You're going to jail. You took a graphics card out. Oh, there's actually locks on these. Whoa, weird. 
I guess because this is a workstation, um, there is PCIe locks. If you look on servers, most of the time they don't have it. Oh! I think that might be about as far as I can get it to come out. Oh, wait. Look. Oh! <laughs> more P. Oh, wow, there's more! Whoa, weird. I didn't even realize these actually used the new 12 pin connectors. I wonder if they've had any that have caught on fire. Well, regardless of taking it out or not, these GPUs are NVIDIA's A100 80 gig cards, which aren't the latest generation. What you probably get with a system like this are H100s, the new architecture, um, but they don't really have stock yet. So <laughs> this is just for show A100s. They look very similar. The idea is the same. Now they're PCIe based, so they're not the crazy SXM cards, um, but they are water cooled, which is crazy. Look at the end. Each of them has quick disconnects. I wonder if I can get one of them off. I don't, know, I don't know how these quick disconnects disconnect. Oh, wow. Wow, that's so easy. Look at that. These quick disconnects are super nice and so easy to use. And they don't leak at all. Some of the ones I've seen, you pop it out and like a couple drops come out. Nothing came out of this one at all. I guess, which matters in a server. Now the reason they'd be on quick disconnects is so you can take a GPU out to swap or if you wanted to upgrade the system down the road, it would be a lot easier than trying to you know, drain the whole loop, change the cards. Nobody wants to do that. Not all RAM sticks are made equally. These ones, so satisfying. Just listen. Oh, that is wonderful. The power distribution in this system is very weird. We'll see more of it on the other side, but each of the graphics cards, and I think the CPU, I don't see how it connects to the CPU. Do you see the power connector anywhere? Oh, it's down there. Oh, interesting. Okay. I get it now. There's a PCB inside of here with big power contacts. There's a big connector that's plugging into the motherboard in the bottom corner. And then each of the GPUs comes off of this part of that board up and over. So it's all directly connected to here and then just little cables to each of the components, but only the graphics cards, I guess. It's, it's a very like kind of elegant solution. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Cool. There's also more PCIe slots. There's one extra one here and another two down here and all seven of them total run at PCIe Gen 5 16X, which is an obnoxious amount of PCIe throughput. So you could run a 400 gig NIC, 200 gig NICs, whatever you want. A CXL module, it is a lot. An absolutely monumental amount of IO, especially considering you're gonna put this at your house. The only other really cool things on this side, of course, the radiator, which we talked about before, it's absolutely massive. And of course, to feed a radiator like that, they have some pretty thick fans as well. They're not crazy like you would expect. I mean, given that it's quiet, it makes sense, but they're only 12 volt, 0.96 amp fans. They're, they're 12 watt fans. Usually systems like this, they're like, I got my 120 watt fan. <laughs> Sounds like a jet taking off. This, this is not that, but, the craziest thing is this looks so cool on this side. The other side of this system looks pretty much just as cool. I don't know if I can move it myself, but oh God. It's apparently 98 pounds or something like that. Oh my God. There's the lines from the rad up to the reservoir up here. Um, and then it goes from reservoir to pumps, pumps to this big manifold and off to everything. Now the manifold's super cool. You got quick disconnects here as well. So you can pop tubes off. Just like that. Some of them are hard lined. Like this is, this is like a soldered connection. I imagine that's probably for the CPU. Um, they don't expect people to be taking CPU blocks off like you would a graphics card. But if you want to pull the graphics card out, it's a little like so easy. Look at that. It's all disconnected. I'm just going to put it back on. Oh, oh you hear that click? Oh. Like the crazy thing is, look at these pumps. They look like something you would buy on like Alibaba for, for $2. Like this is a, a wish water cooling episode, but apparently they're really strong, really durable pumps. And I guess if we turn it on, when, when I turned it on, they're not super loud either, which is nice. Um, I don't even know if they're PW. No, they are PWM, they got, they got four pins each. They're just, they don't look like they belong in this system. There is two of them, of course, so that's gonna give you redundant flow and also more flow. If one of the pumps were to die, you'd still have the one pump going. Of course, the system's IPMI would let you know that the pumps aren't running. It's just, it's really nice. <laughs> I love the manifold too. I think we saw a similar thing in like the, the EK fluid work system. 
It's nice that it's mounted behind and kind of out of the way. It keeps it uh, very clean and easily serviceable. The other cool thing down here, look at this. You never get to see this stuff. Usually the power supplies in a server are plugged directly into the motherboard and all of the power kind of comes off there. There's a bunch of cables in the way, so you don't really get to see it. This is just the like bare contacts. That's, that's 4,000 watts of 12 volt power right there. That's why it's so freaking thick. Like look at the bars on here. This is crazy. You can also see where the contacts are to pass through to that board on the other side we were talking about. There's probably sort of like a socketed connection and they go together so it's easily serviceable. This system completely spec'd out, dual 56 cores, four terabytes of RAM, quad GPUs is around $80,000. The DGX that it's gonna compare to is $200,000. And they charge you like $10,000 a year just for, for service contracts. <laughs> it's crazy. And that system only has a single power supply. It's not even redundant power. This one, is redundant power. If you have 240 volt power, it'll do 2200 watts. If you only have 220 volt, it'll do 2100 watts. So pretty serious power supplies. And they're so quiet. Usually power supplies like this are crazy. But since Supermicro manufactures them in house, they can control, you know, this is the chassis it's gonna be in. We know exactly how much cooling it's gonna need and they can make it quiet. I guess we should take a look at the back. I haven't really looked at it too much. They did tell me that the reservoir, despite these being like quick disconnect fittings, they're not for hooking up to like a central water supply. It's just for filling and draining. Um, you can actually see the coolant in there. It's like red. It looks like rusty water. <laughs> I'm sure it's just like some sort of, you know, anti-corrosion inhibitor sort of thing. There's two little sites you can see the coolant level and there, there is a cap there. I'm not gonna open it because I don't want to make a huge mess. Um, the IO, I believe this board is dual 10 gig at the back, one port for management. There's actually type C, that's kind of cool. Three USB type A ports, VGA and serial. And of course, since these graphics cards are like AI accelerators, there's no display output on them. That's pretty much it. I mean, if you wanted to add more IO, if this is actually a workstation, you're gonna run Windows on this thing, you, you could put a USB card or like a sound card back here if you really wanted. I don't know if anyone's making a Gen 5 USB card, but it would be kind of silly if they did. We got the system booted up now in Ubuntu and we're running a GPU load. It's like a Python AI script and all of the GPUs are loaded, which is gonna put it at about a thousand watt load. Right now, does it sound any louder than it did before? I feel the heat, but it sounds literally exactly the same as before. It's, it's ridiculous how quiet this thing is. I mean, it's large, but still. Oh, the fans, is it's on a little bit more now. Overall, this is seriously just kind of a mind boggling computer. I just, I can't wrap my head around the fact that people are actually asking them for this. They told me this is like one of the, one of the larger requests that companies have been asking them for. They want a DGX clone that's way cheaper and one that people could have at their house. I guess there's engineers that are important enough to have a $100,000 computer at their house. I mean, I guess there's, there's equipment that's hundreds of thousands of dollars that people use all the time. So maybe it's not that crazy. But you know what's not crazy? This segue to our sponsor. Supermicro and NVIDIA have brought together compute infrastructure with NVIDIA's AI Enterprise software stack in a fully integrated solution. With four NVIDIA A100 GPUs and over 50 pre-trained AI models, we're delivering something new and unique from Supermicro to the market today. This is a complete all-in-one platform designed and built by Supermicro with state-of-the-art hardware and NVIDIA AI Enterprise software. One extremely important component of this liquid cool AI platform is the inclusion of NVIDIA AI Enterprise, complete with a three-year support subscription. With AI, enterprises in every industry are finding new ways to transform. They're protecting assets and improving fraud detection, automating and optimizing the supply chain, improving customer service, and delivering advanced patient care. The common challenges from accessing infrastructure to keeping up with rapidly evolving software prevent half of the AI projects from ever going to production. NVIDIA AI Enterprise is the end-to-end -end solution that brings AI into reach for every enterprise. A secure, cloud-native suite of AI and data science software optimized, certified, and supported by NVIDIA that streamlines the development of AI solutions, including speech AI, recommender systems, cybersecurity, computer vision, and more. 
This turnkey solution is ready to start running AI applications right out of the box. It has ridiculously high performance, yet it's incredibly quiet because of an innovative new liquid cooling system we designed from the ground up. So this liquid cooled solution produces almost no noise. It's quieter than a household appliance. And it's incredibly power efficient, helping our customers reduce their carbon footprint and lower their total cost of ownership. We are extremely excited about this closed loop liquid cooling technology built for both CPUs and GPUs capable of handling up to 2000 watt TDP. The liquid cooling works by distributing liquid from an internal reservoir to the two CPUs and four GPUs in the system through two high performance pumps. This AI solution is mobile enough to deploy anywhere from data centers to remote work locations, office environments, and even at home. It's made for AI developers, new AI adopters, and even enterprises with established AI deployments. We call it the Liquid Cooled AI Development Platform. Much of the performance from this powerful solution comes from the four NVIDIA A100 GPUs. The A100 GPU is capable of 249x more AI inference performance per GPU compared to a CPU-only development platform, allowing developers to focus on development and not CPU bottlenecks. And with Supermicro's state-of-the-art liquid cooling loop, these four A100 GPUs will run nice and cool even when running at maximum performance. NVIDIA AI Enterprise software is included and has a three-year support subscription. Available on NVIDIA NGC, an NVIDIA AI Enterprise subscription provides access to extensive library, full-stack software, including AI workflows, frameworks, and over 50-plus NVIDIA pre-trained models, so organizations can develop once and run anywhere. NVIDIA AI Enterprise unlocks the capabilities of the NVIDIA AI platform, giving enterprises the power to automate processes, tap into real-time insights, and improve decision-making. It's based on our X13 platform, features dual fourth-gen Intel Xeon scalable processors. The system is equipped with 512 gigs of DDR5 memory and four NVIDIA liquid cool A100 GPUs for AI compute. In terms of storage, the system includes six 1.92 terabyte NVMe drives, with two of them configuring RAID 1 for OS, and the remaining four used for data storage. As for networking capabilities, the system comes with dual 10G on board and an active cool NVIDIA Connect X6 25G network adapter, which is specifically designed for demanding AI workloads. This new liquid cooled AI development platform from Supermicro and NVIDIA it's changing how accelerated compute infrastructure supports the AI world. Supermicro has one of the largest portfolios of NVIDIA certified systems in the world, and we were able to get this product to market in record time because of our incredible partnership with NVIDIA. NVIDIA would like to thank Supermicro for the great relationship and collaboration that allowed us to bring this liquid-cooled AI platform to market amazingly fast. I'd also like to thank the many people at NVIDIA who are involved as well. We could not have accomplished this without total teamwork. It's gratifying to know large partners can collaborate to advance the way our customers use AI to advance their business. Thank you. Visit supermicro.com slash AIDev to learn more.